All right, guys, welcome back to another video. If you like daily gaming and Xbox content, make sure to hit that subscribe button. We are going to start off here talking about the most popular game in the world right now. And that game is Power World. This game has released and just skyrocketed, taken off crazy numbers already. Right now, when you're watching these videos, these numbers could be even significantly higher. But as of right now, this is what we know about Power World and just how successful this game is. They have sold over 30 million copies in 40 hours since the release. And they've also on Steam had at a point over 800,000 concurrent players. It says here that earlier this morning, Power World reached over 730,000 concurrent players on the Steam charts, rocketing past Goose Goose Duck to become the 10th most played game in Steam history. And that number continued to soar to an astounding peak of 855,425 concurrent users. They say nipping at the heels of Baldur's Gate 3 in the ninth place position of 875,000 concurrent users. Now, that's insane and the thing here with power world is this is a game right now that is only being released on xbox and on pc and it is also a day one xbox game pass game so there's a bunch of different stories here because power world is one of those games everybody looked at and when they saw it they said this is a pokemon clone with guns now that was my first thought when i saw the actual trailer of this game, but I've been playing Power World over the weekend and it is far more in depth than just a Pokemon game with guns. There's so much to do in this game from survival to base building, to crafting, to having your pals running your base and just making sure that everything is functional to staying alive with making sure you have to eat food and sleep. It's just, it is a huge game with lots to do can almost be overwhelming at times, but it is a very fun, addicting game. I can see why this game is taken off and I don't foresee this one falling off anytime soon. I, I think a lot of people did jump into it right away because of the Pokemon look to it and wanting to see what is this thing all about? What is this Pokemon clone where you're shooting down Pokemon? I want to see what this is about because Pokemon is such a huge IP and, and a huge game. But when you do jump in, you do realize it is a lot more than that. And I can see this one taking off and taking off for a very long time. So congrats to Power World and the team behind this game as it is extremely successful. And this is a massive get for Xbox and for Xbox Game Pass being a, being a day and date game, which I don't know if Xbox foresaw them getting the most popular game in the entire world day and date onto Xbox Game Pass. If you're on PlayStation, you can't play this game right now. You're going to have to either go to PC or you're going to have to get an Xbox to play it. So very interesting. And we'll continue to see how this game does expand. Now, the other question when it comes to Power World is, do they infringe on Pokemon? Is there anything that Nintendo was going to try to do here to try to sue Power World, especially now since it has been so extremely popular? I don't know if they will. There's definitely way tons of differences with this game when you do compare it to Pokemon. You actually go in there and play it and you can't really, I guess, sue over these characters. There's many different games that you capture creatures and you use them to battle and stuff. So we will see if there's anything that does come out of that. But there is one thing going on right here. And this has to do with AI and Pokemon plagiarism that apparently social media is highlighting. And again, this probably a lot has to do with the whole industry of being against AI in today's world, in today's industry, because of the major layoffs that have occurred. There's a lot of fear as to what AI is going to do and what it is going to bring to gaming. I actually think there's going to be a lot of great stuff that AI can bring to gaming, but I mean, I don't work in the industry. I'm not at risk of losing my job developing one of these games. So I come at it from a different perspective, but there is something going on here that is being highlighted on social media and it says here steam's newest hit survival game power world has been accused of plagiarizing designs for pokemon a social media users negatively highlight its creator's historical association with generative ai tools it says power world by japanese studio pocket pair released into early access on pc and xbox on friday and immediately became a breakout success with its 
creator claiming 2 million sales in 24 hours and then 3 million in 40 hours. It says a huge launch exposure inevitably reignited Discord that has followed Power Roll since its announcement around its character designs, apparent similarities to Pokemon. And if you go here on social media, you're, you have people calling out some of the similarities to the actual Pokemon characters. It says, reminder not to support Power World. It's not even subtle about its ripoffs. How much else has it stolen? And there is some pictures here, I guess, comparing these pals to Pokemon. I guess I can't see this post because they limited people. So I don't know why you'd be complaining about something, then limit who can actually see the post. This person says, since I'm bored as hell, I'm going to be making a thread of this. I think Power World design analysis, trying to spot every Pokemon they jumble together. And then if somebody compares Galarian's Meowth face to, I guess, the character within Pal World. I don't know these. I've been catching a bunch of these guys. I don't have any idea what their names are, at least as of right now. Maybe the more I play, I will know. But people are just making these comparisons. And I honestly don't know how close these are to Pokemon. I play Pokemon. I enjoy the games, but I don't know every single character and every single thing about them and, and how they would relate to the actual Pokemon from the Pokemon game. But we will see if anything does come out of this. Right now, it's just fans upset about these similarities. Is Nintendo looking at this and are they going to sue the most popular game in the world right now? I think because of how big it is, their eyes are definitely on this and they're probably looking at ways, knowing Nintendo, they're probably looking at ways that it may infringe on the Pokemon copyright. But other than that, Power World, if you haven't tried it out, go try it out. It is a different game. It is a fun game and it is addicting and you're going to understand why people are so interested in this game. And it is still game preview. There are kinks that need to be worked out. It isn't perfect, but... I can definitely foresee this one taking off and being very popular for an extremely long time. Now, when it comes to another game that I absolutely love, a game that I've been hoping they do a remake of or a remaster or something and bring it out on the current generation of consoles, it is Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Now we have some information here about, about the game and how it could actually be in development. So last year, it was reported here at Insider Gaming that a list of Assassin's Creed titles were in development and planned at Ubisoft. We know they go hard on that franchise because it is extremely popular. And they did mention that Assassin's Creed Black Flag remade had recently been greenlit. And they say here, now thanks to a reference that has surfaced on a LinkedIn profile, it seems that the development of Black Flag remake kicked off just two months later in September of 2023. In a report published a month before our list was written up, news surfaced that Ubisoft Singapore will be working on the recreation of one of the most popular Assassin's Creed games ever, Black Flag. And now details have been discovered on the LinkedIn profile of a lead artist at that very same studio, which claims that they have been working on an unannounced project since September 2023, alongside the likes of Mirage and Valhalla's Siege of Paris DLC. So very, very cool. I really hope this is a thing. I really hope it does come out and they do announce it relatively soon because Assassin's Creed Black Flag is probably up there as my favorite, or at least one of my favorite Assassin's Creed games. There's so many memories to it. I love the pirates. I love the sailing through the sea with the pirates singing and all that type of stuff. And it was the first Assassin's Creed that you got that jump from the Xbox 360 to the Xbox One or the PS3 to the PS4 to really kind of see what more power brings to a game like Assassin's Creed during the last generation. So it was that crossover generation game. And I just, it was one of the first games I did play on the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. Now, another game that potentially could be coming back that you maybe was just there, maybe nothing, but it looks like this potentially was teased at the Xbox Developer Direct during the machine game sequence where they were showing off Indiana Jones and they were in the studio. And that game is Quake. Apparently, they could have teased a new Quake game, or again, it could mean absolutely nothing. But if you go through the actual section where they were at machine games they were in the studio and they were talking to the people there on the left side of the whiteboard at 11 34 during the presentation you can see here it says quake six now is that a teaser is that an easter egg maybe it was somebody who was just having fun maybe it's a game that they would love to make and love to work on but people are now speculating that quake six is going to be being worked on by machine 
games. You got to think about what they're working on. They are obviously releasing Indiana Jones this year. It's going to be one of the biggest games of 2024. They're working on the next Wolfenstein. So do they have that capacity as well to be working on a Quake 6? That we don't know. But if you're looking forward to Quake 6 has kind of been in the rumors or a new Quake game has been in the rumors for a while now, I think it would be a great game to bring back. Add that to the FPS repertoire that Xbox has. You put it into Game Pass. You have a bunch of people jumping in and playing it. It would be phenomenal. People would be extremely excited. Maybe it's going to be one of those surprise announcements that we do get in an upcoming Xbox showcase this year or developer direct or at the big show that they like to do in the summer. All right, let's jump over here and let's talk about PlayStation going third party. And I'm joking, of course, because this is the discussion that always pops up whenever people talk about Xbox and them putting their games on other platforms. And we've known Xbox's strategy now for a long time. We don't need to go over it. But PlayStation here, this is a rumor, the PC focus, and they are rumoring here, according to Nixus employee, more PlayStation games will be coming to PC in 2024. And here is the list of the games that potentially could be coming. The Last of Us 2, God of War Ragnarok, Demon Souls, Ghost of Tsushima, and Gran Turismo 7. Now, again, this is just a rumor, just according to a, an employee, but it's a no-brainer. It makes sense. I would actually lean on the side of this rumor being true. We know PlayStation needs to expand and reach a broader range of audiences with their games. They've been putting their games on PC after the release onto PlayStation. It just makes complete sense for all of these games now to get that PC release to just expand how many people are going to buy it, play it, and especially games with microtransactions. It's just a no-brainer for PlayStation to do. So I do expect in 2024 playstation 2 come out and announce a handful of games coming on to the pc platform as they are continuing to pivot and expand out their strategy getting more people into their ecosystem trying to be able to compete with what xbox is doing with game pass and game pass ultimate by putting games on pc having a playstation mobile division and then we will hear more about their plans i'm sure about expanding out their cloud gaming which they did talk about Obviously, Jim Ryan was a big part of that before he left, and I'm sure that they are still considering that and working on it. So I won't be surprised if this does happen, and uh, I, I think that will be great. I think that will be awesome to see more people be able to experience games that were previously locked to a console and had a finite amount of people that was that were able to play it. Now, Halo Infinite is a game that really had a huge turnaround. Huge turnaround since the lack of content when they first launched the multiplayer i've loved it now for a while i think it has the best gameplay in the halo franchise but they are making some big changes here they had an announcement that they are actually getting rid of seasons and i'm not really too sure how i feel about this and see how this new approach plays out because their new approach now is that they are going to have an operations model instead of a seasons model and this is going to be starting on january 30th they say in which it will offer 20 tiers of free unlockable rewards every four to six weeks so the seasons were i believe a couple of months or so and you would get a bunch of content within those seasons you have the battle pass that i believe you can go up to like 100 on a lot of those seasons but then there's also operations that were Put within those seasons where you get operations, you get like 20 levels of extra content to unlock. And it looks like that's essentially what they're just going to be doing going forward, putting out those operations where you have less things to unlock, but also a shorter period of time. And they will refresh that more often. So you're just going more into what is coming up. They say Halo Infinite's next free update is Operation Spirit of Fire, which will add a new customization options, a new map. Forge editions and more on January 30th. The move away from larger long running seasons represents a significant change for Infinite. Speaking during a live stream on Friday, 343 senior community manager John Yuncheck emphasized that the company would continue to support Infinite in 2024. I guess because of this announcement, you had a lot of people kind of concerned. What does this mean? Are they moving on from Infinite? Are they trying to wind it down here, get rid of these seasons, put it operations to keep, to keep people playing? And then maybe move on. We have heard rumors that they are working on the next Halo game, Unreal Engine 5. And are they going to wind down Halo Infinite because of that? Who knows? I mean, I think, I hope that isn't the case. I mean, I would be ashamed to just scrap Halo Infinite 
because of just how good it does play. But that may be something that eventually does happen in the future and sooner than we think. They continue here. They say, we're making a shift in how we're approaching Infinite going forward. And that's for the Master Chief Collection players. This is probably going to sound very, very familiar. The gist of it is we're no longer referring to seasons. We're shifting away from seasons. Then he adds, for us here at the studio, it's going to be an exciting year for Halo. We have dedicated team working on supporting Halo Infinite and continuing to deliver going forward. But also, yes, we have additional teams that are accelerating towards the future, working on brand new projects. There are a lot of things cooking here. So he's giving two sides of the coin here. You're going to continue to work on it, but also being honest and like they are working on brand new projects. And will that mean the teams that have been delivering great content for Halo Infinite now for a decent amount of time, are they going to be taken off Halo Infinite, moved to these new projects? And that's why they have to get away from these seasons things and just put out operations, which I, I'm guessing is probably less work if it's smaller battle passes and not having to give just a huge bevy of content all at once. So we will see what happens here with Halo Infinite. People are concerned that they are winding on the project, but at least for now, we do know 2024, we are going to continue to get new content for the game. But I will end the video there, guys. If you did enjoy this video, hit that thumbs up. If you are new here, hit that subscribe, and I will catch you guys in the next video.